Hello, I'm back. It's good to see you. Hope you're doing well. And here we are once again with our uh, short film. Let's uh, let's see where we're at. So we're gonna have a look here. This is our uh, our shots so far. Again, this is all rough. We're in that rough layout phase for this part of the film. Um, got the guy. We got our epic shot where we reveal the smasher, and then we zoom in. Now, one thing I can tell is already wrong with this is I need to get a close up before I do the zoom in. So we need to see his reaction first, and then we need to see what he's reacting to. So. Um, I might try and switch that up now, actually. So as he falls down, does he pick up. He's going to look up, see the arm. He's freaking out about the arm. Arm's going to drop him down. Right here, I need to get to a close-up of him. So let's see. We've got um, Droid Smash React is a camera that's in that vein. So let's just try binding to that. So I'm going to select that camera, come over here, over my timeline, hit Control b to bind. And then let's see. OK, so we we're pretty far back for this Smasher close-up. Now the droid smash react, I'll just shift D to duplicate this. And I'll call this, uh, let's see, um, maybe pick up close up. I think that makes sense. Pick up uh, close up. What number does this need to be? I'll put it in between 400 and 500. So I'll go 450. It'll stick it right there for me. So this one is going to be that camera. So right here, pick up, close up, bind that. Okay, now I'm gonna get rid of all the keyframes off this camera, so it's nice and clear. And now I'm gonna take this camera and I'm gonna move it closer to him. So you can see, I can always just refer to my little widget. I can see X is forward for me, the way I've set this scene up, which is very convenient. I'll come in here to this close up, something like this. Now we are gonna to need to use keyframes. So I will set an X keyframe right here. And then I'll go to where I want the shot to be over, sort of right here, and I'll just pull back. I might let him, you know, get closer to us because it's kind of a nice effect. So we're gonna insert a keyframe there. We can see what this looks like. Um, I'm gonna right click on this guy and switch this to linear. So it's just a straight linear keyframe. All right, cool. I feel like he's gaining on us a little too much, so I might take this one and grab Y and just adjust so that I am in a very similar close-up framing. Yeah. Now let's fix the angle. So he's not quite, it's not quite right with the with the rotations and stuff. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit, and I need to pan over a touch as well. I'm just trying to center the center, kind of right on his eye. Um, now I might need to set keyframes for these guys. So I'm going to do that. I'll just grab two keyframes there. Yep. And as we go to the end of the shot, I'll just adjust it. So up a touch and over a touch. There we go. And then right click, because these are already selected because I just made them. So they're still highlighted. And I can make linear and that will linearize all those guys. So now we've got a nice slow push in. Um, I might drop the camera a little bit for this, like a little bit of a pedestal drop. So I'll just take my Z location. I'll go to the beginning. I'll drop a keyframe there, come here, and we're just going to go down just a touch like this. Right click linear. And then I am going to go to my rotation X and just lift it up a bit. Replace that keyframe, maybe drop down a little further and up a touch. There we go. It's going to give us this nice little kind of rotate kind of thing. There we go. All right, let's see how this feels in context. It comes up. Spin it around, we drop, ka -chink, boom, cut to, ah, get his reaction. Great. All right, let's see what happens next in the storyboard. Um, where are we? So let's see, pop up, get carried over, 
I'm looking at the storyboard now, just checking the timing of things. We zoom in, we've got the smasher, we've got his reaction. Okay, so we got this complicated bit here where he's going to, he spins around, let's come out up drawn here, this little arrow and him kind of going over. So it's like he's gonna jump up, spin around, um, like start to try and get away. And what's going on here? He leaps out of the way just in time. So we've got this shot where like the camera is like in the smasher and he's gonna jump out of the way. So let's get the timing of that right. The smasher is gonna come down right about here. I can use that as my sort of bookend for this. I'll extend my frame range to 836. And the first shot we need is here, this action he's gonna turn and start to run. We use that as a cut point. So this is the cut point right here to this new camera where we're on the other side of him. And then we're going to go back to, I'm not sure what I was trying to draw here. If this is the same, I think this is the same drawing, like the same shot, I just can't quite tell. Oh, I see the camera's going into the, the smasher from this angle and he's jumping over camera. And then boosh, he lands, and we cut on the land. Okay, all right, that's cool. That's a cool idea. So we're gonna come up, smash, starts to turn. And then here we go. Let's go to get that other angle set up. Right, where do I want it? Right here. All right, so new camera right here. This is gonna be shifty. Droid smash react. This is going to be droid um, called a 700 B1 underscore uh, droid run. Um, turn and run. Again, those names are just for me, just so I can look at this and see what I need to be clicking on when I want to grab a certain camera. All right, I'm going to bind it to this frame. And I'm going to delete all keyframes, not markers, keyframes. And I'm going to hit my quick select and block camera to view. If you don't have that set up, you can always grab it here. Block camera to view, under view. And let's see, I'm going to swing around. Um, oh, by the way, I've updated to, where is it? I can never remember. Oh yeah, up here, splash screen. Uh, 3.2 is what I'm using right now. So um, nothing's broken from what I've seen just by opening the new version. So it's just gonna give me a little bit more of a performance boost, which is good. So whenever you get a new version of Blender, open it, uh, open your project file with it and just make sure everything's okay. There's nothing's breaking, everything's fine. Usually everything's fine and you can move forward. They've been doing a lot with geometry nodes each iteration. So sometimes geometry nodes is a bit weird because uh, some things change in the fundamental way that they do it. But typically speaking, it's okay. Um, but usually you want to move ahead with the new one because it's more stable or there's more performance improvements, things like that. <clears throat> I hope you're having fun. Hope you're enjoying this. I know I am. Okay. Uh, now, let's see. Droid turn run. Uh, this is good. Uh, so we're going to come around with this camera. Um, I just tried to use <laughs> WASD to move my camera. That's really funny. I'm doing at work. I'm uh, currently working on a project. Uh, with uh, in Unreal Engine, and uh, that's all WASD controls for <laughs> moving the camera. <sighs> it's really funny. I'm also hitting F a lot because I use Maya as well all the time at work now. <laughs> and W, which I just did there. Ah, this is terrible. Look at me. I feel like I'm betraying the Blender community. All of this, all this rubbish. All right. Uh, okay. Rotate Z. Bring it around. Grab X. Come back. All right, now we need a good frame for this. We'll stop, let's zoom in and let's see. Oh, this is really gonna be annoying. I'm gonna keep hitting that, I think. Hmm.
Now at this point, we should probably be a bit closer because we're like trying to really do the peril thing here. Oh yeah, the belt's not even moving. Yeah, because it stops somewhere around there. Let's get the belt right. Belt control. All right. So it's moving and it's... Our camera seems to stop a bit too shy as well. This needs to be a bit further. Should be the X location. Uh, yep. Actually, let's hit A to select all. I just want to get all the keyframes. Um, grab all these guys. So everything here needs to be grab X on that last frame. Something still doesn't feel right there. Belt control. Well, we need to improve this anyway, so we might have to change all those cameras because it's just going to impact towards Smash React. Yep. Okay. So let's see where are we going to do that that cut. So that cut happens here. So at this point, we need to be like right up on this thing. So let's get a good belt control location. Um, so this puts him inside. Uh, now, one thing we have to be careful is we're running out of rubbish. So let me think about this. We need to reset the belt and move him forward. I knew this would be a pain, but I think I think it's okay. It's not going to be the end of the world. Um, but what we can do is we can reset. We can reset everything after here, I guess. So let's just do that. I'm going to take uh, the belt control X, and I'm going to move it all back so that we've got the rubbish just starting to go in the trash compactor. Okay, um, and I'm gonna select all of these keyframes and hit full stop. This will allow me to kind of just change the views so that I can see the angle of these lines. You can also just do that control, click trick. And um, you can see it's actually a bit steeper this time. I'm trying to keep it kind of consistent so that the belt feels like it's moving at the same rate um, through everything. So I can just oops, grab this and move it up. And kind of match that angle just by eye. It's fine. Um, all right, so now let's get him. Where is he at? Because he'll have moved way back. Um, characters, robotic arm, droid. Where are you, mate? I'm going to set a keyframe for him here on the. I'll just do one for his whole. For everything and we come here and then let's position him so at this point we want to be kind of close right so where is the actual door okay so it's right there so i'm going to put him right here i think because yeah what's going to happen and let's grab this camera and go ahead and push it in what's going to happen is as this shot plays out, he's he's got to go like kind of into the thing. So right here, he's going to jump over the camera as the camera goes into the thing. So he needs to be a lot closer. This is a really complex scene. And if you're following along, this is actually a really good cross uh, crash course for you to learn like, you know, how to do pretty much anything in Blender. Um, this is some pretty intense <laughs> blocking that we're having to do. Doesn't get much more intense than this, even on feature films. This is how it looks when you're actually making a movie. All right, so let's get him. Grab X. He's really small compared to that door. Wow, look, look at that, that's huge, that's way different. So this is going to mean that as it goes up, he's going to go in. Yeah, cool. And that's that's what I want. Let's make sure he doesn't intersect though that doorway at any point too soon. No, nope. yeah, that's good. That gives us enough space. Do we have enough rubbish? Am I going to see that lack of rubbish? I don't think so. Because look at this angle. I don't think we're going to see it. Let's let's check. We'll bring the camera up. Down to go to the keyframe, droid turn. So we need to be right up in here for this shot to work. 
Um, something like this, maybe. OK, yeah, we can see that there's no rubbish in there. So let's fix that. We're going to have to push the rubbish further and then bring him back. Bit of back and forth. Belt con. Grab these two. And what we want to do is, oh no, not those two, sorry, these two. Just let's go ahead and fill the compactor. And then let's go back to our dude. Hit down to go to that keyframe where he's at. Grab X. So it's so useful having that X and Y be sort of like, you know, X is just going to be forward and back in your scene. It's just so much cleaner that way. All right. So. Okay. So let's see. That, that uh, Zolly that we're doing is not quite working. That's all right. Now I can tell it's like this feels like we got a long way to go, right? And I don't feel like this timing works. It feels like we're too close too quickly. Um, see how far back we are there? So a couple of things we could, let's think about this. When he lands, I mean, it's good starting him on this like gauntlet, but what we could do is this shot, we could shorten so it doesn't travel as far. We get sense that he's a lot closer. We could also try having this be a bit further back. I mean, how does it impact our drama? Like, as long as he's getting closer, we could speed the conveyor belt up for this bit so it's more intense. Um, so he's off to the arms already by that point. So we can zoom in. Let's try speeding up the conveyor belt. So come back to belt control. And I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna speed it up a whole lot. Let's see what happens. I feel like for this bit almost we need to have needs to be faster. So let's set another keyframe for belt control here. That way we can kind of keep this the same. And then this one we can move up. So that way when we get to here. Let's make the difference. We're only going to notice it around here, see? I feel like I want to cut right here. I'm going to grab this. All right. It's because that the inbuilt pattern, like the beat of that drop, makes you start to feel like you get like a sense of it. And you kind of want to see like the cut start to reflect it, sort of like a gut reaction. Um, all right, now let's let's get a frame that works for this moment here. All right, first we'll get our droid guy in the right spot again. Um, we are going to want to move him, and this is where we also do our funny business with the belt control, don't we? We drop it, and if we're cutting sooner, we need to move this to where we cut. except that changes the feel of that shot. i be careful about that. Over here. I do think that's the right idea. So let's set a keyframe here. And then these guys. Um, what do we want to do? I should just delete this one. And then this one. Just 
pop it in right to this point. Oops. There we go. Move them back one. Cool. Droid. A lot of back and forth here. All right, let's grab Droid. And we're going to grab all of his keyframes. Back to this one. And I'm going to bring him in a little bit more. And then let's take this camera. First up, let's give it a wider lens. Let's go like a 24. So we're like opening, opening it up a bit. Let's tilt up some. I'm going to keep deleting the keyframes though. Um, so we'll start, start here and then let's go in. Yeah, this is great. Excuse me. Uh, right click linear. So we gotta get him to basically turn and jump over us while we're getting in closer. And right here, what we're gonna do as well, we're gonna like have this like gradual look up. Let's get that framing a bit better. This doesn't need to be 0.0072. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, all right, so come down a bit. Let's get our framing up a bit better, center him up. Cool. I wonder if we could actually be like in that doesn't matter. I'm gonna cut away. All right, timing's feeling good now. Let's get him. Droid rig. I'm gonna grab him. Where are you, mate? There you are. You just turn on extras. No bones. That's what I want. Okay. Um, let me think about these poses. I'm going to lock him off here. Um, oh, that's good. He's locked off. Yep. Great. And let's also go into pose mode. I'm going to set up my preferences. Uh, key map tab for pie menu. Now if I hit tab, I can go into pose mode. And I'll select everything on I, and I'm going to do a whole character pose. And then go to this next frame here. Now I can just start tweaking him. So I'm just going to straighten him up. And we need to get him to turn and jump. So one of the key poses is going to be that jump pose there. I get the timing of that right. Um, so we'll start him off like this. And da, 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 da. Let's give him a new pose. Maybe squats down, starts to turn like this. Like that. I'm going to right click and set these to constant as well. Or actually, uh, all right click constant just to get that blocked. And then another one here. He's going to I'm going to turn him. Oh, it's annoying the way his feet work. I guess I'll need to use the master controller for that turn, which I don't really want to do. Why are these guys separate? I guess they're not parented. I mean, can I just grab all this stuff and just? No. Is it the?
It's always a pain when you've like built a rig and you don't know how it works. I do no. Well, uh, so I guess we will use the object mode. Turn him around. That, and then pose mode. What is this curve? Is it okay? And then let's do the jump. Pose mode. Lift him up, lift this up, um, lost his feet. Need to be all on global. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm quite happy with this uh, method of animating like the armature for its master location. I kind of want to do it all in the poses and then just reset. But this rig doesn't seem to be built to let me do that, which is kind of annoying. I forget how, what's the hotkey to quickly change the space or something? Is it like comma? Yep, that's it, comma. Okay, cool. Constant interpolation going again. I will need to animate his X motion on the armature as linear. All right, let's grab all these now. Let's just grab all and let's F3 uh, clear pose. Clear transform. All that I'll put him back as he should be, which unfortunately is rotated like that, which is annoying. Say so he lands about there, maybe. Maybe right here. Those modes, make sure everything is all still constant. Yeah. All right, let's get his motion figured out with the X location. 
Um, all right, so we need to wait for him. He jumps here. So I should take this keyframe, copy and paste, put it there. And then from this point, I'm going to set this to these to linear for now. Get a better view here. Also going to delete this one. Cool. Probably do the zed as well. Although that's right, we're not doing zed with the master control are we? It's just his pose. I'm just looking here on the side, just to... Cool. Let's get all of his controllers. I'm going to bring him down a bit with this one. I'm just lining these up, bringing them in a bit closer, trying to get the timing right. I'm gonna bring these, all of these a bit closer. I'm gonna use the scale. I'm using the timeline as well, so I can select everything at once. I'm make sure all the keyframes are selected. And then you can even go back to object mode with all that stuff selected. And then also make sure we're grabbing the how does that work? We grab the rig, that's right, and then we go into pose mode. Hit A to select all. And then select all of these. There we go. How's that selected? Now if I go to this keyframe. I should be able to hit S to scale, and it should just bring all those up. That's a bit too much. Yeah, that's roughly right. We need more poses, but it's going to help us get the camera timing right. All right, so now let's think about the camera. I'm going to go back to object mode. So I don't like the fact that when he's going to turn and duck, we're going to lose him because we're looking up at this. So we need to wait for that pan up. So let's come back to our camera and let's get the Object transforms, let's grab the X rotation. And we need to basically wait to do this tilt up. In some ways we should wait for the jump. I might, I might Bezier these keyframes so I can see, I can actually see the motion a bit better for this framing. Let's pose uh, A to select all, come back over here. 
A to select all. I'm going to box select all these guys. These are all of our poses that we just did for this shot. Right click, interpolate, Bezier. I'm going to grab these two. So let's see. This one doesn't need to happen so soon. So said location. Let's have a look at what's happening. They say I want him in this sort of downed pose a lot longer. So if I select everything, which pose do I want to keep? This one, yep. So come here, shift D to duplicate, X to lock, bring it in. So it's grabbed everything except for this one for some reason. What's going on there? My location. Okay, let's copy and paste. There we go. It used to be kind of like launching forward. So let's go back into object mode, grab the X location and have a quick look at what's happening with this. Uh, yep, let's go. Grab it here. This one though needs to be linear. Needs to be like this. I kind of want him to go a little bit further because um, he's sort of colliding with our camera. Well, the climber, our camera does stop, doesn't it? So it'd be good to have the camera keep moving. So maybe that's fine. So I'm back over to here. It turns. Let's find the X location of the camera. Make sure it continues throughout this shot. Um, oh, that's right. We're going to be cutting halfway through. So probably cut right about here. Now the idea was to put the camera inside the, this thing, but I just don't know if this is going to be enough time for that effect. It's going to feel like a flash frame. The other thing is I want to see the, the impact, the connection point of the smasher with the conveyor belt. So he turns and the fact that we're panning up with him means we're going to lose that impact. So maybe we should just get rid of this X rotation. Maybe we could, maybe we just have a little bit of it. Like we'll put one there and then bring this one back down and then maybe Bezier this one. No, that's stupid. That doesn't work for that. No, you know, I feel like the impact was better when we were going up with him. All right, let's get the X location again. Let's get back to what we were doing with that. Um, I'm going to create another keyframe here. And let's control zoom. You can really see that angle. Let's grab Y till it all lines up. So now we really are just continuing to move. And then if we cut to, so this is droid turn run. Let's shift D to duplicate, control B to bind, droid turn. Uh, turn land. So we'll call this. And we'll go up to 
800. And for this one, just turn around. So whip it around like so. Also delete all keyframes. Grab X, bring it back. Let's see how this works. Line this up a little bit better. Yeah, I think that works. We can use lighting to show that he's really close to the smasher at that point. So now what's going to happen? Let's check the storyboards. So this is he goes straight into a run now. So he runs, he jumps on some rubbish. Then he gets snatched and put back down. And this is where he realizes that the arms are here to stop him. So we need to be a bit careful about that. Be cool if we kind of like broke into a run here, you know, like we boom, boom, and then we're kind of like handheld going with him as he runs. Like that'd be kind of fun. Sort of this profile thing. Let's try that. <clears throat> now I think I can bring my run cycle in from the first scene. Should be cool. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Grab the run cycle, that'd be nice. And then what can I do for that? Um, do I already have let's go to my NLA editor? No, don't have it. Although it's just marching, isn't it? It's only a run cycle. So we haven't really done a run cycle. All right, I might just animate him moving. So let's get Mr. Droid. And we also need to get our conveyor belt as usual. So let me land. So let's get that belt working for us. So the next chunk that we're going to go through is going to be all of this. So let's get let's get it going all the way out to here at least. So I'm going to set a key. I'll set a key for the rubbish here. Go forward a frame. And then let's extend it so we've got all the room we need. Just bring it right up to here, I think. And then this one, bring this out. Match the original kind of speed that we had. So give us a good long run of rubbish. And just looking up here, I can see that, um, yeah, it's gonna last me this whole time, which is what I want. <laughs> it's pretty funny, epic jump, whoa. Um, now we can think about this too, because the timing of where he lands, we could actually do something like an epic jump, like secretly hiding it from the audience, just to get us a bit closer down this track. So he lands and he's running and there's less time to really let, uh, like, because the idea originally was to get him to the pile. So he's like, it's really clear where he's trying to get to. Um, you know, we might even want to do an insert of him like aiming for it after this bit of a run. Not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. Let's let's get him in the right spot. 
so back to the droid and we are going to want to set a keyframe where is x location here And then what I want to do is set a keyframe for his X location here. Um, and then we could just grab these two, right? And move them around. Now is going to see how it changes this. I'm going to break these tangents. Um, and we'll type, uh, if we go free, that means that this will now no longer change those tangents because they're not connected. So I can just bring this guy up. I might do the same for this one here just to be safe. It didn't look like it was changing, but you never know. All right, so we're going to get him into the right spot. So it's like, yeah, cool. Now he's going to be running all through here. So let's get... Let's get his grab X. Let's get him to like run to here. Does that work? Is that too far? And then the camera will go with him. Uh, let's grab our camera. Turn land X location. Full stop. Okay, we only need have one keyframe. I'm gonna let's see, let's focus in on it. Let's make it linear. Should keep us in the right spot with him. Actually, this one we could make Bezier. And then this one we could just scale it down. Rotate it up. So we start off slow and we kind of like speed up with him. That feels like he's going way too fast, doesn't it? It's because the conveyor belt's moving opposite. I mean, it's gonna be cool if he kind of like hops and stuff. Let's slow him right down. Trade rig. So let's see. Uh, right now he's going from here to here. So let's like half it. Let's see how that feels. Something like this. Let's grab the camera. Put the camera in place. Okay, how does that feel? It's a bit better. Just gonna shorten that up a bit. I'm going to stop the playback here at 860 for now, just so it's a bit. Also, I could just hit uh, P to preview and just select this range. That feels good, but it doesn't feel like we're anywhere close to the pile. I don't think the pile is going to be something we're close to. I think we might just have to be him running back through all the stuff is really what we're trying to do. And one of the, the arms stops him. Let me clear that. So Alt P down here on the timeline. We'll clear that preview range. See how it feels with all the others. Pretty cool. Would be nice to probably have one more shot to cut to here as the arm swings around. I think what we'll do is we'll just get closer to this as we get, get closer to this other arm. He's going to jump. That arm's going to grab him. It's 
coming together. Definitely coming together. It's looking cool. Keeping it nice and rough, nice and loose so we can be flexible. But overall, the pacing feels right. Things look good. I feel like we're getting the right beats. We're capturing stuff. It still does on that playthrough. It'll be interesting to see how this feels when I watch it again after taking a break. I still feel like maybe we're we're too close to it here. I think we need to be further back. I mean, I like the drama of, of being that close, but it's like, yeah, it's way too quick. It's we're really not there yet. Like, I wonder what we could do about that. I mean, maybe the drama of this point is that he's not right underneath it, because the arm's going to pick him up and put him back down. So, like, if we look at the storyboard, what happens? He's going to go, gets put back down, and he goes close to it again. And he's like looking, trying to come up with something to do. And then he makes this big decision. So there's like a lot of stuff there that kind of gives us a moment where we can get closer. It's going to be fun to animate all that. <laughs> it's going to take us forever. It's going to be great. Uh, and so maybe we don't want to go this close. Maybe in reality, we want to be further back here. Because, you know, we're already talking about how do we push him further away, you know, to get closer to the hill. Like, where does it feel right that he would be doing all this? Let's find it. Let's find that spot and then we'll wrap things up for today. Um, all right, so where are we? Here and here. Okay, let's grab these two. And I wanna also grab my camera. Can I grab the camera too? Um, both of these. Can I grab the uh, X? So I want the X location of belt control. I want the X location of my camera. And my X location of my other camera. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of this. Doesn't seem to be working. I wonder why the camera's not moving as far. I guess it's because it needs to be exponential. So we'll move him first. So let's grab the belt control. All right, so where is he? There he is. Let's put him about halfway, like here. Let's see what this does. I don't know what it'll do, but we'll see. And let's grab our cameras, X and X. Um, all right, so this one's a bit funny. Oh, that's right, it's because it's the land camera. And this one's fine. Okay, so we'll grab these two. Grab all of this. And we'll find this moment. So now he's going to turn, jump over here, and run. Yeah, that's cool. I'm not sure why we've why we've lost him. This camera. Where's my, I think it's the droid that moves. Droid rig, body. Let's see what happens up here. So he turns, jumps, oh, he snaps, snaps back. Is that him or is that coming from the, the belt control? Is there a snap back on belt control here? Oh, it shouldn't be. I guess there is. What happens if we just delete these? Is that gonna... Okay, that's definitely not on the belt. It's on him. Oh, there we go. It's this. 
this bit. So we need to move this bit so that let's get right on that cut. I like it when his like feet were just kind of coming into frame. Yeah, cool. All right, let's see how that feels. You can see how useful it is like working through curves, working with curves to make changes like this. Because you can easily just kind of grab everything and move it without changing the, the timings and stuff that you have. Yeah, that feels a lot better. That'll be great. That'll be great. Because then it's like we're not quite there yet. We, we have established the danger. He's moving closer to it. We can have a nice little run here. Nice little bump with these things. He jumps up on it, grabs it, throws it down, and then it'll get a lot closer. I think that'll work out well. Let me save again. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm going to wrap things up here for now. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I uh, hope you're learning lots of things as I go through this short film and uh, you're picking up lots of cool tips and tricks for yourself. Good luck with your own projects. As always, don't forget to check out the Patreon. We've got tons of extra content over there and project files if you join at the second tier and up. Um, so head over there, have a look at that. Thanks so much for the support, everybody that's already on the Patreon and everybody that's joined on YouTube. You all mean a lot to me and I really appreciate um, just all the love you guys throw my way. Thanks so much. Have a fantastic week. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, see you later. Woo!